There was a lesion and the doctor biopsied it and came back squamous cell carcinoma. And they ended up having to remove approximately 40% of my tongue. Honestly, it felt like a big old blow in my gut. You just don't think you're gonna get cancer. I'm such a stubborn person that I said, no, I don't have cancer because I've never been sick. This can't be happening to me. I had been experiencing some pain in my throat. I thought it was just a sore throat. They found a cancer in my left vocal cord. My reaction was to ask the treating physician, what's next? Cancer is an abnormal growth of cells that will either grow locally or spread to another part of the body. And when you have that abnormal growth of cells, it can crowd out other normal, healthy parts of the body. In the case of head and neck cancer, two things can occur. The cancer can grow and cause a loss of function, particularly when we're talking about the larynx or the voice box. It can start to impair the function of the voice box so that a person is having difficulty speaking. It can start to press on nerves and it can make it hard for people to swallow. So it can spread to the lymph nodes in the neck. It can ultimately spread to other parts of the body. And once the cancer spreads to other parts of the body, it's not curable. Radiation is a cornerstone of the treatment of cancer. When we think about the tools that we have to fight cancer, we think about surgery, treatment that will affect the entire body, such as chemotherapy or targeted therapy, and now potentially immunotherapy. Radiation has a more local effect. Radiation targets the very center of the cell, the DNA, and it breaks DNA into pieces. When you break the DNA, you're able to slow that rate of growth or potentially stop that growth entirely. And the cell will shrink and eventually get absorbed by the body. Head and neck cancer, particularly when it's caught early, is highly treatable and oftentimes curable with radiation therapy. Sometimes we'll use it in conjunction with chemotherapy as a radiation sensitizer to work together with the radiation to make the radiation more effective. Sometimes we'll use it in conjunction with surgery to help clean up any potential cancer cells that were left behind. There are other forms of advanced radiation therapy for head and neck cancer, such as protons. Whether that's right in any particular situation is best determined by the patient and their doctor. Radiation therapy is an invisible x-ray beam that travels through the body, and there is no pain associated with it. The x-rays are applied to the area that we are trying to target, and once that process is done, the treatment for that day is over. We know that cancer recurrence can generate from just one cell, and that's the premise behind using radiation after surgery. So, how's your eating and drinking doing? Many patients, whenever they get to see the doctor, their mind goes blank. So bringing somebody to the doctor with them always helps. They have another person who may think of a question that they wanted to ask, but then just forgot whenever they saw the doctor. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Doc? Good to see you. Thank you. I think that you should come in and ask as many questions that you need to, because for me, this is new. It's like learning a foreign language. Before a patient starts a course of radiation therapy, Generally, we need to ensure that they're having adequate nutrition and that they've had adequate dental preparation. This usually involves a visit to the dentist for restorative procedures if necessary, and at a minimum, a cleaning. All right, lift your head up, I'm gonna change your I have squamous cell carcinoma in my right tonsil and two lymph nodes. Stage four. I'm here today to get a CT scan and be fitted for my mask. The first step in the radiation treatment process is to have a CT simulation or a CAT scan. For this CT, we're going to use the information to aim and shape the radiation. The CT techs will start an IV. For head and neck cancers, they are required to use an immobilization device. We use a mask made out of a very thick plastic. The point is to try to replicate or reproduce their treatments every day. 
So the mask allows us to hold the patient in the same position every day to reproduce their treatment to make it as precise as we can. There are holes that they can breathe through and that they can open their eyes through. So that once they realize that they can breathe through it and see through it, it makes them feel a lot more comfortable. Depending on where the head and neck cancer is, there may be some other devices that are used for that patient with radiation therapy to make sure they are properly getting the correct treatment. The immobilization device is not uncomfortable. For many patients, it's just having the mask on and knowing they can't move. The mask is not the most fun thing, but it's gotten better. It's an open air mesh mask now, and uh, I've had enough time now to get used to it. If people do have difficulties tolerating the mask, even for a short amount of time, there are medications that we can give them to make them more comfortable. Before radiation therapy starts, there are many imaging studies that the radiation oncologist will likely use to determine the treatment plan. This includes a CT scan that's performed inside the radiation therapy department. For head and neck cancer, we are often merging outside imaging, and some of those imaging include a PET scan, which um, shows us how active the tumor is and actually lights up on the scan. And these images are used to make a three-dimensional model of the patient's anatomy in the computers. And this is used to help figure out how to aim and shape the radiation specifically to treat the areas of concern while minimizing the dose to the surrounding healthy tissues that don't need the radiation. The pretreatment planning is very extensive. We are able to highly target the treatment plan. Each patient is unique and so we can target these patients within a millimeter and hit their treatment site. A little bit down. There you go. After the CT planning is done, the patient will come back for their very first treatment. On this treatment, the patient will lie on the table. The doctor will come assess the plan to make sure it's precise and how they want it to look. We put that mask that was previously made on that patient and we fasten it to a base plate that actually locks it in to make sure that they can't move during the treatment. On each of the patient's masks we have marks set up that we line up to with our lasers inside the room to make sure that we are in the exact spot for the treatment. So once we line them up to those marks on the mask, we then go outside and start taking images or we administer the radiation. We can see and hear them at all times, so it does help them be at ease knowing that we're watching throughout the whole treatment. It's definitely very important for the patients to relax. During radiation, the patient will not feel anything. All they hear is like a buzzing sound. You did great. Good deal. Head and neck cancer patients generally see side effects around the three week mark. They will be seeing the doctor every week um, to go over any side effects that they may be having. These side effects start off being relatively mild and then they often grow in intensity as the patient moves through the course of therapy. First side effect usually is an alteration in the sense of taste. After this, many times patients will notice that their saliva starts to get a little thicker and they may find themselves needing to drink more during their meals. They may also notice that their throat starts to get a little sore as they eat. And there are certain medicines that can be given at this point to help minimize this discomfort. However, the patients may find that they need to alter their diet such that now they're moving on to a softer diet and ultimately even to a liquid diet. One of the major side effects of head and neck radiation is pain when swallowing. This can translate into great difficulty in a person maintaining their weight and meeting their nutritional needs. Patients may require a peg tube or a prophylactic gastronomy tube. It's placed into the stomach from the exterior, from the skin, and it's used to feed the patient externally. It is usually temporary. Other common short-term side effects include fatigue and local skin reaction within the radiation field. Radiation oncologists have a number of remedies to help address these side effects and manage them. I am in week number three of radiation treatment to reduce the possibility of a recurrence. The salary glands have not been overly affected yet. Um, they said normally week three and four is when I start seeing dry mouth. Um, I do have some mouth sores on my left side where the radiation is. 
side effects are unpleasant. There are ways to manage it, and we are working on that right now. After each treatment, my throat was very dry, but I would just drink some water and it would be manageable. I didn't get sores in my mouth, and my appetite did not change. I continued to eat. You just couldn't taste the food. Okay, it's been a little over a month now since my last treatment, and I'm starting to gain my weight back. I'm getting stronger. Radiation therapy for head and neck cancer is not an easy treatment for patients to go through. However, the side effects are generally temporary and the patients are able to move on with their lives. The main thing is to have a positive attitude because without a positive attitude, it's gonna be very difficult for you to do your part. I wanna learn as much as I can about it to help myself. I'm gonna beat it and I'm just not gonna have it. Every day, every treatment, every radiation beam, we are killing cancer cells. I've got a second chance and I'm gonna take advantage of it.